Rwanda is one of the biggest recipients of Western aid and support from the Clinton Foundation. But progress has been blighted by accusations of human rights abuses, both domestically and abroad. President Kagame's government has been accused of funding rebel movements in the neighboring Democratic Republic of Congo. Rwanda has its defenders, among them former British Prime Minister Tony Blair and Bill Clinton. I support a free press in Rwanda. I don't support the repression of journalists. I don't think human rights should be violated in the Congo to protect the territorial integrity of Rwanda. But I suppose I do make more allowances for a government that has produced as much progress as that one has and has been well organized and otherwise had the rule of law. And so it's the way it is. There's very few situations are perfect. But the politics has already changed. Whereas the Clintons are out to win hearts and minds across Africa, the United States has already opened up a new and more dangerous phase of engagement with the continent. Africa is now one of the major fronts in the battle against international terrorism. We're obviously in a very unstable period in the world, particularly on the continent. Many of the experts I've spoken to link this directly to what happened in Libya and the overthrow of Gaddafi. I've heard experts say that <coughs> Libya has now become the primary source of funding and for arms for al-Qaeda. Was it a mistake to overthrow Gaddafi in that manner? Well, first of all, it doesn't work that way. There was no way that you could, uh, unless you thought the United States or the EU should do it directly, should invade the country. Uh, he was overthrown in no small measure by a popular uprising that the other countries supported. Gave them guns, gave rebels arms. Yes, but was it a mistake to help them overthrow him without knowing exactly what the outcome would be? I don't think so. And in Syria, what should America do? What I think we are finally getting around to doing, which is provide arms and other support, do it through the channel that we believe is by far the most trustworthy, General Idris, and hope for the best. They, the Syrians have not asked us to put boots on the ground, nor should they, nor should we. And it may work or it may not, but I think and there is no good choice there, but if, if Iran and Russia have made a choice and they have unleashed his Hezbollah forces to fight, and that is what seems to have turned the tide a little bit here, this is one of those things where it's better to get caught trying, win or lose. Sometimes you're not going to win them all. You're doing just, something is better than doing nothing at all. Sometimes. Some, not always. But in this case, I think, yes, I think when this is said and done, if the, if we can ask ourselves, how will we feel if Assad is replaced? How will we feel if he prevails? I think in both cases, given the facts on the ground and what has occurred, the United States will feel better if we tried to create a constructive alternative.